Hey, what is going on friends? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ashley and I make new fish videos every single week. So remember to smash the subscribe button and come join the family. Alright, so about a month ago or so, um, I did a video with Marcus about Arowana grooming and tanning. So if you guys haven't checked that out yet, and I'll put a card on the top right hand corner of the screen so you can go. I highly recommend you check that out first before watching this video. So um, after we filmed that video, there were quite a few questions in the comment sections. And so a couple, about a week ago um, from filming this, I put out a community post and asked you guys for questions you might have about Aromanas. So a lot of you left really good um, questions and we'll be answering that today. Uh, first first question or first two questions okay they come from uh, Leo Lion he asks how big can you start tanning and the second uh, similar question is Chandan MN asks best size to start tanning and uh, so he asks a little more specific he asks for crossback and for ribs okay so I guess it's similar but to what, what, what size can you start and what size will you recommend that is a good time to start Okay, basically for tanning, there's not really a specific size to tan. First of all, number one, you have to notice that when you start tanning the fish, when it's young at the time, you usually do not tan because number one, it's too small. Number two, you have not seen the coloration yet. Only when you see a certain base color, then you start tanning because if you were to start tanning before the coloration comes out, you can't really gauge on how long and how much you need to tan it that really depends on the fish itself so for usually for reds wise okay for red is very simple when we start to see the rims of the fish especially the scales it starts to have this orangey rim starts to come out mm. that is a very very good time to start tanning because the coloration is out so what people do is they can use the two-step tanning method which my mentor has taught me okay so first we use the LED LED tanning lights okay we start to tan the fish, right? You can put it 24 hours or 12 hours, whichever that is comfortable to move. Because after all, they are not more of industrialized or they are selling the hours, they are just keeping for themselves. So, for this, usually I recommend that you use the LED light for tanning first. Right? Once the rings are about 2 to 3 mm thick, then you can use the PR light to start tanning. Right? Then for cross back, Okay, the difference between the crossback and the red arrow is that the colours for crossback tends to come out faster. Okay, you probably take about one half to two years for the colours to fully bloom. So that's why when you notice when you read online, you don't really see much about crossback tanning. Because uh, basically you don't really need to tan crossback. Right. right. Crossback you don't have to tan because the coloration comes out very fast. What we usually suggest to do is that put them inside a white colour. Tank with a white light will do. This should increase the shine and if by chance you have a very good genetic line, right, you will start to see the gohead to develop. Mm. So I'm not sure whether they had seen it in YouTube or maybe they go to local fish shops. Yeah. They will see cross back with golden patches on the head or even the, 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 the helmet. Is yeah, what we call the full helmet. Yes. So I'll put, I'll put some pictures inside. Yeah, correct. So the difference between the cross back and the red is that cross back, the color doesn't really, you don't really see an evolution in colors. It's just yellow. For red, you will start to see, for some fishes, you get to see yellowish, then you start to see deep orange, and then you turn red. That's why we do tanning for them, because the coloration takes a very long time to build up. For crossback, no, you don't have to tan them. It's not because they are cheap. Right? We do get uh, local hobbies saying that, no, like, crossback is cheap, I don't have to tan. No, no, no. Uh, crossback wise, just put in a white tank, okay? If you really want it to be very nice, I want my suggestion to do is put inside a white tank for about one to one and a half years, let the gold shine stabilize, after which then you transfer to a black tank to develop the gold tone that will be enough. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you wouldn't say that there's a particular size to start tanning, it's more individual each fish, you mm -hmm. look out for that, that uh, coloration to come out on the scale, and then that's when you can start tanning. Yes. Okay. Next question is uh, from Li Hong Jin. Why do everyone not turn green? I think this is more towards silver, right? So this is more on silver or maybe for what we call the banja, the banja red, the G2 red. Yeah. So for 
Silver ones when they grow bigger, it's the part of their coloration to turn green. You can't really do much about that. Right, for Banja Red, yeah, Banja Red or Great Toe Arowanas, because of the genetic lineage, the colors do not develop, instead they fade over time. Right. That's why for Banja Red, when you notice when they grow big, they have green color and then the tail turns yellow. Yeah. Sad to say there's nothing much we can do about it because that's how the species of this fish is. Even if you were to do tanning, it doesn't really work. Right. So, so, so the, is there any way to avoid it very hard? It's oh no, no, this, this, this is by natural. Okay. It will fade over time. Yes, and when you're young at the time, it will look very, very red. Yeah. Yeah, but then after that, it starts fading. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why the prices between the panja red and the very, very, big, big very, very big difference. Yeah, because the color doesn't build up over time. In a state, it does fade. Mm. Okay. The <coughs> next question comes from uh, Brandon Tan. He asks, um, does blue or black background color have any influence on arrow base color uh, development? Mm, yes. Instead, if you're looking for very dark or uh, deep color tone, right? I would suggest you can go for a black tank. Yep, as you can see, most red arowana is actually prefer to use black tank. Because when a uh, fish is in a very black environment, the color tone tends to intensify and it will get the very, very deep red that you're talking about. Right? Then not only that, for blue background, yes, it does. It's more like a neutral color background. It does not really help to build up the shine or intensify the color. It kind of remains original. So this, in this case, that most people, if you keep other features, will start to do with blue. Because if let's say you've got other features like blood pirates or maybe uh, cichlids inside, some people even put stingrays, then blue color will be a better color because one thing is neutral, so your fish will look more net. Look, the colors look more natural in a sense. Right. It doesn't so affect other You wouldn't use blue for any form of gloomy or tanning, right? Mm, very, very subtle. Okay. Next question comes from Upside Down. Oh. Yeah, he asks uh, how to repair drop eye. <coughs> so so it, I'm, I'm guessing it's only surgical, right? Is there any other way? Uh, okay, there, there is two types of drop eye, what we said. Okay, uh, I tried a few ways. If let's say the drop eye isn't very serious, that means it's only slightly. Okay, what usually drop eye does is that three quarters of the time, let's say the fish is small, it's usually due by environmental factors, maybe the lighting, the positioning of the tank. Okay, this is drop eye wise, what? you can do when especially with slight drop eye you can actually cover up the entire tank yeah, in, in the past i actually tried before i think it was a five to six inch fish but the poor fish because the fish shop put it like right on top of the right on top the top tier fish tank it starts looking down on the tank yeah. so it does develop drop eye so what i did that one home is i put it inside a small tank because it's not big at all right i use a black cloth and cover up the whole tank so the only time when i start to remove the cloth is that i remove the cloth to fit Right, you can keep it that way for maybe about two months or so. You remove the cloth, you it might recover. Because basically what we are doing is that when you cover the fish tank, right, it creates a very dark environment. It's basically pitch black, you can't see yeah. anything. So it, instead that you have to feel around its surrounding and then its eye can automatically adjust itself. It might help, it might not help. This is case to case basis. But if you don't want to do operation, then this is one of the ways you can actually try. Right. Okay, so the other way is surgical. Yeah, surgical la. La. Then uh, surgical, if you are unsure, please hire somebody to help you. I'm sure there are others that do this surgical experiment. Right. Okay. Um, next question comes from Ioma1989. Yes, I've heard from several arrow keepers that red banja and yellow tail arrow no need to tend them. So is that right? If no would they gain color if I tend them and feed them well? Mm, sad to say, uh, no matter how much you try, the color would not the color would not improve over time. The color will still fade, say for yellow tail and banja. That's why usually when you hear a lot of arrow keepers, they say don't bother to tend them because no matter how hard you try, it will not become red. Right. So you wouldn't yes. wouldn't recommend um, uh, you tending. It probably would be a waste of electricity in a sense because no matter how hard you try, you couldn't get it. Up. We <laughs> tried before. Uh, apparently it still doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. So, so sorry. I think he, he can try might get a G one red or something. Yeah, you are to try and tan it. Okay. Um. Next question is from Mitun R. Yes. Hello, my friend feeds raw goat kidney to his silver arowana. 
and he said it promotes the growth of the arowana. Is that true? Can I do the same? Oh yeah, yeah. Now, now this is a very interesting topic. So in Singapore nowadays, that we've seen a lot of people started changing the way of feeding. Like we see beef heart in the market, and then we see chicken liver. Sometimes we feed pork. Well, goat liver. Yeah, all these are feedable. But one main thing is while feeding this type of uh, so-called animal protein that we see that is not really natural compared to fish meat or frog meat eh, is that once you feed, you find that the water is very oily right. and you start to see this protein layer on the top So if you can feed, go ahead uh, just, I recommend just to put a protein scheme at the top of your own water so that the oil doesn't really so, block so, the aeration So for the aerowana, it's good, it's okay It's yeah. more for the, uh, make sure you take care of the You take the, sure take water. the water because this uh, top of what we call animal meat they do have higher fat content than features of worms itself. Mm. Okay, so the next question comes from uh, Guna Get Cutter. So he got many questions. We'll start with okay. the first one first. Uh, he asked, lower pH for red and higher pH for cross fat. Is that true? He says, all my arrows, uh, red and cross fat, are doing well in 7.5. Okay, given that uh, arrows originated from Southeast Asia, most of the water there is actually quite acidic. Okay, for red and gold, yes, correct, they are both under 7 pH. The range to keep them from is 6.5 to 7. If you keep them, from, if you keep them at 7.5, they are actually fine because they are rather adaptable. So if it maintains for you at 7.5 and then it's okay with you, your fish are doing fine, then just leave it at this. You don't have to. Consistency over. Yes, consistency. It's rather to have a stable pH rather than have a pH that fluctuates up and down. Right. That will cause. Uh, serious issues for the fish. Mm. If not, just try and, if not, if you are doing it at 7, let's say 7.4, 7.5, fish is doing fine, then so be it. Right, okay. Yeah, don't really have to change the pH down to 6.5 or 6.8. Okay. So, I, I think, uh, another, uh, part of his question is that, is he asking, so, um, between red and cross back, okay. same, same pH for them roughly should be okay, is it? Mm. Will you red, red usually I prefer keeping it at 6.5 for go cross back 6.8 would be quite okay for them. Right, so slightly higher. Slightly higher. But overall you will say that if they're doing fine in 7.5 you just leave it at 7.5. Yeah, just leave it there. You just leave it at this. Okay. And then uh second part of his question is why do chip scales appear? And mm. many say it's because of coral chips. He says I think it's bullshit. All my tanks mm. have coral and none of my arrows have chip scales. So why do chip scales appear? Okay. They are not wrong, because they say it's due to the coral chip. But second thing they have to check is the pH of their tank first. Usually chip scale happens because of what we call water corrosion. If your water is too alkaline or too acidic, it will cause the scales to start to corrode. That's why you start seeing chip scales. So they are not wrong, because coral chip tends to bring up the pH to very, very high levels. Right. Right? So the water gets too alkaline and then it starts to corrode the scales. But Every tank is different, so does every situation. So it's always best if you look at your fish and then you find out that the scales are slightly corroded. It's best to check your pH level first. Mm. It's usually either too high or way too low. Right. So, mm. so um, let's say for example now uh, someone has chip scales, mm -hmm. he checked the pH. Mm -hmm. uh, what pH will you, like at what ranges will you say that okay, it's probably has to do with pH? What, what number, what, uh, what's the upper limit and what's the lower limit that you will start to suspect? That is likely due to pH. Okay, usually for low on the lower scale, anything below six. Below six. For upper scale, anything above eight. Okay, so yes. six, between six to eight, if it comes out that it might not be. It eight. might be a little bit too acidic for them, and that's why you can see the scale starts chipping. Mm. Mm. And usually, the issue with chip scale is that the scale will not grow back. So the only way to get rid of it is to pluck up the scale, which right. you will have to do operation. Right. So it does apply for a crack skill as well. Crack skill as well, it does not need to Third part of his question, um, he asks, DE and PLJ are from genetic? So drop I does now, we, we talk about it, I mean, mm. uh, PLJ? Okay, drop I and uh, PLJ, this is a rather debatable Depending on the topic. Okay, actually DE and PLJ also depends on your grooming. Depends on your grooming and how you keep it around. Usually PLJ happens is that when you overfit too much and you underfed the fish. Okay, that, that is why usually when people buy arona, especially those who want to keep one fish alone, that he wants a very perfect fish. 
that usually they go for mid size, not small size fishes. Okay, because the reason why is that once, because I used to keep, usually I keep around as a kid from young, so they're probably about 5 to 6 inch yeah. onwards. So, one thing I noticed that because of young arowanas, one thing is that they eat a lot and second thing, they take very long to stabilize. So for example, when I first bought them today, they actually does not have... When I first bought them, they actually don't have PLJ. Right? Yeah. So after that, when I put them inside a tank, and then it takes about 5 to 7 days for them to stabilize and then they start eating. So after all, I found them to have very slight PLJ already. So, it also depending on the diet wise, Yes, genetic does play a part, but it's also how you feed them. Actually, if you overfeed them a lot, like for example, one day just one big meal, and then the likelihood of happening is very high. Right. Right. If you want to prevent PLJ, I would just suggest maybe small meals, but multiple times a day. Oh, yeah, that's the only. Fourth part of his question. Oh, is it? Yeah, you got five. You got five parts. <coughs> so, uh, Papa is what's a albino arrow <coughs> lifespan? Albino. Yeah. I guess what you're asking is what's the lifespan and uh, maybe is it different from a normal no, no. albino lifespan is the same as a normal arrow on the lifespan. Uh, right. The the only difference between albino is that because of the genetic defect, right, they lost their coloration. That's why they appear whitish to yellow mm. compared to the normal fishes. Yeah. Be it any albino, it could be an albino or sky, it could be anything you notice that the color was very pale. Yeah. I lost his pigment, it will not be black, it's red. This is normal, right? It does not affect the like lifespan yeah. of the fish. Okay, but what it does affect, the eyesight does affect a little bit. They can't really see the red. Oh really? Yes, for albino fishes they can't really see the red. Okay. Yeah. So that know. that will be one of the one of the Oh, like is it is it just very slight or is it something that you no it won't be very very severe it will be slight very, very slight. slight okay okay and the final part of his questions um why are there a sudden increase in short body arrows here and do they have health issues ah no this this is a good question okay short body because in any of the markets all right when there's something unique. For example, in the past, there's no albino silver, and after the first person bought albino silver, everybody wanted to buy albino silver. So this is where the trend of short body fishes starts up. No, no, this we see short body loha, short body Oscar. Yeah. Right? Then you get to see a short body combing after it once in a while. Right? So now everybody is also looking for short body aroma. Okay, but the issue there are two types. One is short body. One is what we call the FFF, the half mm. which the body is not short. It's like really compact size. Usually short or semi short body, usually their lifespans tend to be a little bit shorter. Far full long is another issue. Far full long is the lifespan is definitely a bit short. Right. Because uh, one thing we must understand about the anatomy of human human or fish. When a fish grows, the internal organs grow as well. But when you look at the short body fish, it doesn't really grow much. It just grow one way. Right. So imagine this weight build up prevents your internal organs from growing bigger it's actually quite compressed really. right. so it does actually reduce your lifespan and I might get flamed for saying this like, I thought it's actually a defect fish like. it's a very marketable defect fish right yeah. <laughs> it's a defect no matter how is it it's still a defect right. but because of its uniqueness people are willing to pay for it but mm -hmm. it's a defect Reduce the last one. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay, next question. Um, let me see. This one comes from Ronit Amin. How to train the arowana to eat pellets and oh. all types of food? So I'm oh. guessing, I mean, they, they do eat pellets. I'm guessing that maybe if they are struggling to get yours to eat, if it's not accepting dry food, how do you get it to accept dry food? Stuff them. Stuff them. This is the only way. And not all arowanas will accept pellets, especially if you didn't like feed from young. Right. It's very, very difficult. I had some customers in the past, he tried starving arowana for one and a half to two months and he just wouldn't eat a single pellet. Right. Okay, so, so, so when you say stuff them, how, how long should someone go before they say, okay, I can't, I can't okay. give up before this fish die? Mm, okay, so uh, arowanas basically, depending on the age as well, the older arowana, the longer you can starve. Mm. 
But I'm guessing the older it is, the harder it is also to get uh, a yeah. change, right? Well, the younger it is that you try, okay, if let's say you just bought a juvenile and then it doesn't really eat the pellets, okay, fair game. So what you can do is that you can try feeding it uh, whatever that the farm is feeding it first, right. because different farms feed different food. Right? Try, try feeding it a little bit, just uh, one or two bites will do. Subsequently, stuffing for a week, then you start throwing your pellets in again, and then you see whether it helps or not. If it doesn't help, continue doing the same method again, again, and again. Usually in this point of time, your fish when you look, it'll be very, very skinny, it'll be very, very slick. Yeah. My suggestion is, if you really wanted to eat pellets, just bear with it at the moment. Because it's either you or the fish. If the fish wins the battle, then you will not be feeding it pellets. But one thing is that I tried before, that if you're keeping a community type tank, the chances it. of it eating pellets is actually higher. Oh. Because, uh, like what the old generals used to say, uh, monkey see monkey do. Yeah. Secondly, is that when they're in a community tank, they will go and snatch for food. So the acceptance rate of pellets is actually higher in a community tank. Right. So um, like, like you said, that's how we are well, asking about the fish inside, it's creating, yeah. creating competition for food. Right? Yep, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as it feels that there's something that's snatching food with it, it will try to snatch as well. Because okay. this is something happens in the wild. In the wild, they're not really picky, they eat everything that drops out. Because they do not know when the next meal will come. Yeah. Like fish are actually quite smart. They will know when they are the pampered one or they are the one that's just one of any one of them. <laughs> so when fish are pampered, they will tend to be very, very picky on food. Mm. That's why in the community tank, you, you get to see a lot of arowana uh, keepers, you know, in the community tank or whatever. They always tell the people, oh, my fish eats everything. Yeah, because community tank, they does create this competition where the fish, it's either they eat or they stuff on the day. Mm. So they will be very, very aggressive when eating. Compared to you keeping one fish by itself, the fish wouldn't care. You feed me or not, I know food is still coming. <laughs> Either, either way, you're gonna feed me anyways. Okay. So, so is there um, any particular fish that you go to to um, add as a community that gets more effect or? Oh no, any fish will do. Any fish will do. Any fish that was snatched food with the other one. So long as the other fish is aggressive at eating the, the dry pellets, mm. they will do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Next question comes from um, Arihara Sudan R. He says, he's, he asks, uh, feeding prawn meat regularly leads to parasites infection, question mark. And, uh, okay, so he has three parts, so we will answer that first. So, does feeding prawn meat regularly lead to parasites? I'm oh, guessing he's talking about frozen, frozen, frozen. Prawn. I'm guessing it's from... Yeah, you're guessing about frozen meat, what we call the market prawn. Actually, market prawns are one of the safest. Because a parasite cannot live with a dead host. Right, like, oh, we know. And especially when you buy it off the market and then you put it in the freezer, whatever there's alive there will be dead already. Right. Yeah, so to me, actually, market prawn is one of the cleanest one to actually feed. Even if it's a uh, live, uh, sorry, uh, fresh or frozen, is it? Fresh or frozen, yeah. Okay. Uh, either way, to me, it's one of the cleanest. Okay, some uh, usually what they heard is still a myth, like they said, for some supermarkets, they actually spray some chemical on top to make it look fresher. Okay, that one is still me if you're not sure, but for me, usually I buy from the market. Usually right. market-wise, it, it will be good enough. Okay. Yeah, they're actually quite clean. Don't, don't have to be afraid of this. Um, so, second part of his question, he asks, <coughs> are heaters necessary for baby and adult for 24-7? So, do you need heaters all the time? Well, that would depends on where you put the tank, actually. Your tank, number one, also depends on your country. I have no yeah. idea where he stays, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, staying in a place where there's four seasons, of course, a heater will be... Right. A heater I, will be I, guess, I guess a better way to phrase the question yeah. is, uh, what is the upper limit and lower limit that, that your no. temperature for arowana can go? Not really, like, in a sense, because different climates, the arowana that live in different climates, they are actually used to a certain temperature. Right? Mm. Yeah. So, for... What I can suggest is that if, let's say the area that you stay has four seasons, put in a heater set around 28, 29, 28 to 9 degrees, that would be uh, more or less the go-to temperature for most fishes. Only when the fish is sick and then you want to increase its metabolism rate, will you change it to 30 to 31 degrees. Other than that, you don't really need a heater. And especially if you are living in tropical climate like for example Singapore, then Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand or even Vietnam, if 
the places doesn't have any winter, then you don't really need a heater. Right. Okay. Uh, unless you're putting in an aircon room, then that's... Mm. Okay, and uh, this last question, okay. Okay, I think this might be a bit yep. uh, complicated to answer. Yes. Okay. How long to breed an arrow one? Oh, no, that, that, that's a very good question. Okay, for arowana wise, okay, for crossbacks, usually when we talk about brooding size ready to breed, we're talking about, about two years plus. Okay. They actually generally quite, quite fast to breed. Okay, for rates, uh, rates wise, the reason, one of the main reasons why it's still, the pricing is still so high. Rates are harder to breed compared to crossbacks. Crossbacks breed in large frequencies and the eggs are very very common it's easily a brooder can go up to 20 to 30 eggs but for red other runners because i went to a few farms in singapore before when i was still learning this trick right i had some owners complain to me that two years and not a single egg was found that's why red it's still so hard to breed and red some claim that three years plus they have seen it great before some about five years. So we take an average rate about four years would be okay. But for course back anything more than two years you can start building really. Alright, okay. Mm. Next question. A very good question. Okay, this this question comes from Ragnar Lothrock. Oh. Yes. Okay. What colour backgrounds for different colour everyone? Mm. That will be based on to personal preference, like a uh, different background than like what we speak before. If you want a neutral color, go for blue. If you're looking for intensifying the colors, go for black. Then if you're building the shine on the crossing level, go for white. So this applies to uh, all the different types? All of the different types, all the ones. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go. So make, see which color tone you would prefer and then you can change the background accordingly. Okay, um, next one comes from Jason Xiao. He asks, how do we determine the gender of the arowana? Oh, no. and, 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 okay, so he asked a similar okay. question to just now. Is it possible to train an arowana to eat pellets? So the one we've answered. So yeah. how do we determine the gender? Okay, uh, there's no sure fire way. This is a very hot topic. I mean, even in forums and in uh, forums, Facebook, or YouTube, everywhere, this is uh, what we call a very... Nobody has the answer, basically. It's not nobody have an answer. It's, Everybody uh, has different answers. It's a very sensitive topic. Okay, because we do see charts online that they do tell the arowanas that it's male, female, basically on their jawline, you know, then the chick has the A shape or doesn't have the A shape. But one thing people feel to... Most people actually didn't really read at the bottom of the topic. I'm not wrong, Chen Wu also really such uh, article. <coughs> But if I'm not wrong, you can read back the article again. It should still be in our website. The accuracy is only 60 to 70 percent at best, which means there's a 30 percent chance of you to ID it wrongly. Right. So there is no sure fire way at the moment. Uh, so it basically, when you use, it's only a guideline, but it's not 100 yeah. percent correct. You yeah. might still get it wrong. Right. Yeah, it's. Only uh, and that, that, that one you have talking about when you look at the, the jaw, yeah, like, well, because of the males, they, see the males, the males, the males get the hold, bigger jaw line, and I think yes, to hold the eggs, and then the shape from the top, you know, sharper means female, broader U shape means male, right? But this is very, very subjectable because if, for example, if the person feed the fish too fat, then the whole thing looks sumo, look like a male, uh, and then it looks like a male, but actually, it's a female. No, right. you can't really touch on this topic because it, it's too debatable at this moment. So far, the only person that I know managed to 100% ID the fish was because he worked in the zoo. He took a mucus sample of his fish and sent it for DNA testing. But that one was the only show fire way in the point of time. That was how he got it right. Other what, than what, that, what about, um, hmm. so some... some Fishes or even with different animals, we talk about venting, looking at the, the that, that um, bottom part of their. Mm -hmm. That one usually applies on secrets. Secrets. So with arrow on us, can't really do it's that. It's still one vent. <laughs> you can't see a difference. <laughs> it's still one because they are monogenous fish, so you don't really see the difference. It's the same as Leon tetras, you can't read really tell male and female. <laughs> right. So for arrow on us, it's the same thing. I mean, for people, you want to look at the guideline and then you 
it's a good guess, but whether it's male or female, we really don't know until you, until maybe one day you read it by accident, or maybe one day you started playing it. Yeah, you know. Ah, uh, then for so, some I, reason, so I guess the only sure way is uh when you breed it and then you see who holds the who holds the eggs, eggs and then that's it. But female has sometimes also they also hold eggs as well. Yes, so, so it's very hard to get uh, mm. definite. So in the pond, what we usually look out for, uh, what happens is that in the past I went to some farms and then me and the farm owners we were talking around the pond area no? so we tried to use this uh, okay. tried to use this method to see the male or the female right so when we, all of us were looking at the farm owner all of us were looking at the one particular fish because secondly is the male also in the wild most male animals actually they have brighter colors also mm. so in the pond you actually get to see some fish are more brilliant colors some fish are darker so the fish was dark. Okay. So we were suspecting it might be a female. Then the head was rather sharp. So right. all of us was like, oh, that one confirmed would be the female. He went to pair up with another fish, so it was a male. <laughs> <laughs> so we all were having, oh, oh it's a male. So we were saying, there's no way you can tell it at the moment. Right. Uh, it's a good guy. But, but it doesn't always work. Your fingers crossed, la, you yeah. get it correct because there's still a 30% chance of getting right. it wrong. Okay. So um, the, the last question comes from. Um, Aka Kundu, he asked, is it chili red? Uh, okay, basically he asked, how, how does a chili, chili red, red differ super, from no, super, super red? And which one is more beautiful? Okay. Basically for this topic, right, for super red, chili red, black red, or what you call violet fusion red, no, all these are just farm names of branding their own reds. All of them actually look the same. It's depending on how you keep them actually. That's why for example chili red. You know, some farms they keep the fish and then the red looks very vibrant, you know, then they start to name it chili red. You know, some fishes are very very red, then they call it super red. Right? Then for example last time I was uh, last time I kept a few fish, right? They are from Rainbow. They call their fire red. Right? So basically all of them when they grow up right, they all know about the same. Is that one is more on branding. Right, last time there used to be a difference when they call it chili red, black red, you know, super red technically they say has bigger finage. Chili red, the red is brighter, more vibrant. It's more to your striking red, you know, the like iron man suit, the top of reddish, yeah. the reddish tone. And then black red will be the top very deep, dark tone. Mm. But that could all be achieved by playing around with the background and everything. So it doesn't really matter now in the sense that there's not much difference really. Because nowadays, in, even in uh, Kalimantan itself, they have stopped all the blood red, chili red. Now everything down there is branded as super red. It's only in Singapore now you still see uh, chili red, uh, super red, and uh, majestic red. This is all basically a farm that created their own name for themselves. Right. Yeah, so it's, so it's more it's on sort of, branding. It's sort of up to the, the seller to call yeah, what yes. he wants and yeah. then how he, he would himself differentiate his own arrow yes, from the it's, super and the chili. Yes, correct. It's basically their farm's way of identifying what grade is their fish or how they want to call their fish. Like To them, this fish, okay, let's say this color ratio of it, it looks very similar to this color, so I put chili. It looks like chili. So it's a branding. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, but just a red is still a red. Okay, how deep or the tone or you want to set it, it still can be done. Right. So do not fuss over this top branding issues. One thing I would suggest just buy the red that you like. Because to be honest, you if you prefer a red deep dark tone, then for some reason accidentally you buy a fish and it comes out the dark the red is a very nice red but then the tone is not dark enough for you, you still wouldn't like it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So Alright guys, I hope you guys found um, today's video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so you get notified every time I upload. And uh, if you guys want to see more of such content, if you still have more questions, then go down to the comment section below and drop the comments. And if, I, if there are enough um, good comments, then I will try and get Marcus back again for another interview. Oh yes, Marcus? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so if you guys still have questions, go down to the comment section below. Um, Anything regarding arowana grooming or even if it's a uh, general care or if you're facing any problems with arowana, then go ahead, drop a comment down below. And if not, I will see you in the next video. Beautiful.